Hello, hello. Right, so here we are, week 151. So, first things first, the tank is all good. Uh, livestock is all good. Clams are all good. So, that's the main part of the week, really. Um, so, what have I done this week? Made some, oh, first, before I do anything, I decided to clean up my clam that died a couple of weeks ago. So, I just... Um, citric acid bathed it really gave it a bit of a scrub um just seems a shame to throw it away really i'm not really sure what i'm going to do with it but um maybe i'll keep it as a, just a reminder but as you can see it was a, it was a good size clam not as big as my biggest one that's in there but not far off so i don't know how old that guy is because i had that for over three years i think the guy i've got it off Probably had it for a similar amount of time, so it's a minimum of six years. So that's that little uh, story over. I did do some more digging on clams. Um, bacterial reasons seem to be the most likely cause of its demise. Uh, the slightly worrying thing is that a lot of people said if you lose one clam, they tend to lose more than one if they have more than one in the tank. So, I don't know. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's one of those one-off random events. It just, it still seems very strange that that died two weeks after I added another clam. Um, so, anyway, there it is. So, I will keep it for nostalgia, I guess. Uh, so, what have I done this week? Um... I have got my new um, pre-filters to add to my RO units. Last week I added 25 litres of new DI resin because I noticed my TDS had gone to two. Um, so basically, as soon as it moves off a of zero, normally I just change things out because I just try and keep it at zero as much as I can because I get through a lot of RO water. Um, I mean, I do with thousand litres a month just in water changes alone and obviously I drive the um, calc through there so someone actually asked me what I do for my auto top off um, so I have the apex auto top off um, which has got two sensors and a mechanical float um, but I haven't used it. It's, obviously, it's in the sump and it's there and I can switch it on if I want to. But I've literally turned it off and I do all of my top off is through my calc stirrer. Um, so I just check my salinity regularly, um, probably twice a week. And I just adjust up the amount that the calc gets dosed. So I think at the moment I'm putting 17 litres a day in. Uh, and as the summer comes, that will creep up to, I think last year, memory serves me right, I got to 24 litres a day. Might have been more than that, might have been 27. Um, but yeah, it just, it obviously undulates throughout the year as the summer comes and more evaporation takes place because I'm keeping the tank cool. Um, I can put more HO on or more calc in. Uh, but the actual HO itself, I haven't, probably haven't used that for a year or big Christmas before last so yeah so that's 12, 13, 14. it's that 15 16 months so I haven't actually had an ATO working on the tank um, I just top everything off through my calc stirrer um, which works fine but obviously you have to be on the ball with your salinity um, so as I say I'll check mine at least twice twice a week I use as I've shown you before the good old-fashioned um tropic marine um hydrometer so i just use that right what else um oh, i bought some more pellets this week as well bought another thousand mil i think they sell them in tropic marine um back toe pellets i think they're called um so my phosphate is still rising but it's rising slower than it was um so it's at 0.2 um 
So I've added the extra uh, pellets. So I'm hoping it will either asymptote or plateau um, or even drop. And then I'm just treading carefully. Um, I don't want to strip out anything too quickly. Um, so I'm hoping once I can get to around point 0.1, between point 0.1 and point 0.5 with the amount of pellets I need, then I can just maintain it, basically make it nice and easy. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so the only thing I want to change in terms of using the pellets, because I like using them because they're really simple. They're just easy. Um, you, you put them in some boiling water for a couple of hours. Um, I think that drive, it essentially drives the air out. So... Um, and then when you put them in reactor, obviously they sink. So the only thing I will change is the reactor, because I've already said this, but I do not like those top fed um, Delta reactors. They are just a real faff to change. Um, so I will change that at some point. I can't use my um, rod exclusive one because it's not big enough. So I need to buy a larger rod exclusive one, really. Just because all the plumbing goes in the bottom, I can just unscrew the top in the pellet, screw the top back on, that's it, I don't have to take the reactor out, I don't have to try and grab it and get it, because the Delta one, all the plumbing's in the top, and then you have to remove it all, and it's just just difficult, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want difficult, I want easy, um, so I will change that out at some point. So yeah, so I've uh, got new RO pre-filters to fit, I've added another 200 um, grams of pellets into the reactor, um, I've added two more max spec uh, bio blocks, you know, like the little square blocks. I've now got 10 in the sump. I'll buy those 3D printed racks. Each rack takes four blocks. So I'll add another two. So I have a total of 12. Um, I think one of the things when I changed the kind of sump layout down there, um, I found a crate. Uh, it's like a food safe crate, which I think I'm going to use to expand. Basically, my thinking is I will, where at the moment the water comes out at the end of my rod exclusive, but then basically goes into the returns and gets pumped straight back to the tank through the, um, the external return pumps. I will make those come out at the end of the uh, rod exclusive something into this crate, which I think is 185 litres. And then I'll put the two of these pumps in the crate and then back to the tank. And that will give me more capacity um, because since I've added external skimmers, external um, calc, external, I'm looking at it, I can't think what it's called. <laughs> it's a calcium reactor, yeah. Um, so they all hold water external to the tank as well. So if the power goes off, everything drains back to the sump. Um, so I am probably right on the limit of the size of the um, water, the amount of water that can drain back into the sump. So it makes me slightly uncomfortable. So at some point, um, I need to expand that sump. One, it allows me to add more media because I'd like some more ceramic media in there. And two, if I ever want to put another tank up here for either frags or whatever. Um, I've got that extra capacity to allow that to also drain into that sump. Um, so that will probably be done at some point later this year, I'd imagine. Uh, so the other thing, I have had a fortuitous thing happen this week in that I've got two Pantaray Hydro is the 42s, I think they're called, down the end of the tank. I bought them second hand. One of them works perfectly, uh, and I knew this when I bought them. The other one, it's got a software problem in the fact you can only run it on the lowest setting. Um, so if you try and turn it above the lowest setting, it stops. You can see that the impeller actually stops moving, and then it reverts back down to the lowest setting again. So I wasn't particularly bothered because I got them very cheap for what they are. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just run that one on the lowest setting. It's still moving water. So, um, so the one I've gotten down that end of the tank, so the one on the back of the tank is on full 
blast, so to speak, and the one on this side was on the lowest setting. So what happened last week, I think it was, is the magnet fell off the back. Um, I think the fish, these clips, these magnet clips that I use, they often get pulled off because the fish are getting big enough that they just rip the clip off. Um, and then the clip floats up and down that end of the tank, it, it often floats up and get wedged behind that tank to ray pump. And then the fish, you know, they rip it out basically. So I think they probably pulled the pump off and the magnets dropped. I couldn't find the, I couldn't find the magnet at all. So it's just a little black round magnet. I took all the stuff from under the tank out. I went down the stairs, looked in my sump room because I thought maybe it rolled down. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I thought, right, I will try it and use a different magnet. So I've got the uh, little tons of nano pumps. So I thought I'll take the magnet off of that and I'll see if I can use that. Uh, so unfortunately, they repelled each other. So there are obviously different polarities on the magnet. So I thought, right, it's not going to work. I then dropped the magnet the tonsy one, and it hit the side of the heat panther ray pump itself and stuck to it. I was like, all right, okay. So I left the pump out of the tank completely. I come back, I think it was the next day actually, I had another look, and the magnet had actually stuck to the side of the ballast for my UV. And obviously because it's black, and it wasn't on the floor, it was like 18 inches off the floor, um, I didn't notice it first time. So I put it back on. And lo and behold, I think it must have reset the pump because those pentaray pumps are slightly weird. And the 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 control box uh, is like a flat box, and it's got two circles painted on it, basically on and off. And then the control is literally a magnet. It's just like a little round magnet that you put. So you slide it to the on position, obviously, and then when you turn it, it goes through the different um, flow mechanisms. So I put it back in the tank, put the magnet back on, and then I flipped the magnet to on, and then I just span it anyway, because I just wanted to see what it would do. And it is now gone over, I think there's four different, um, or three different sort of pulses, or strengths of flow, so to speak. Um, so it's now running at full pelt, same as the other one. So it seems, by getting hit by that magnet, we somehow reset the uh, the software inside. So yeah, so that was very fortuitous. So I've now got two pentarays running at uh, full health, so to speak. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this week. I can't think of anything. Oh, yeah, I've got this thing next to me. So this. So I think I mentioned in the last video that I. I'm probably going to go down to doing some automatic water changes. I did them in my last tank. Mm, kind of successful. It's like most of these things when you think, oh, that'd be really good to do. They're never quite as hands off as you want them to be. So I used a DOS dose in my last tank to do water changes. And one of the annoying things is it went out of um, is it balance. Calibration, yeah, I guess out of calibration. So obviously the in and the out would fall out of calibration. Um, so using the head for each. Uh, part of that was probably due to different um, draws on the pipe. So the, the draw for the water coming in was much longer than the draw for the water going out. Uh, so I think over time they just come out of balance. So I was constantly having to recalibrate them and the tubes would block and they'd crust up and so. I was thinking I want to use something else if I want to do automatic water changes. And this is when I came across these guys. So this is a Master Flex LS or something, easy load. Um, I mean, it's obviously you can see it's big. So it's a beast of a machine. Um, it can pump a lot of water, right, several litres um, a minute. And so this is running on... I mean, it starts at zero, obviously, but that's a very slow setting. I've got these hooked up to two rolls of five meter RO. So at the moment, it is just pumping water out of the jug and back into the jug. Because um, I've made, I've got one handy. I made up some, yes, peristaltic tubing for it. So I just bought this. Um, tubing off of eBay and some connectors 
and I've just run in it. So I think that's been running there for probably four or five days. Uh, I just want to check the resilience of this tube to make sure it's not going to split. Um, I don't think it will, but I just wanted to check it before I actually started using it. So it's just normal tap water running through at the moment. Um, and also I wanted to know the rate. So that running at 10, which is a very low setting, gives me 20 millilitres a minute, which um, I've worked out is 191 litres a week over seven days. I wanted 200, so it's near enough really. Um, so that's a 300, and just over 300, 350 I think, litre drum. Um, so I will probably set that up to do 200 litres and then the other 100 litres is just for me to take out the detritus that collects, clean out my sump and clean out that little um, softy tank that I've got, or LPS tank I've got down with the sump. So all I need to do really is decide where to run the RO tubing from and to. So I don't want to run it into the sink because that's going to be salt water. It's going to cause a lot of rust on that stainless steel. So down that end of the fish room, I have a waste pipe, which my RO, waste RO goes into, and it all connects down to this and goes out. So it makes sense to run the waste into there. So I can pull it from the sump and dump it down into that waste. And then I can pull it out of this and I need to decide where to put it into the tank, really. I mean, I've got mesh on the top of the tank, so I guess I could just run it through the mesh. I suppose it would do that. Bad for the salt creep. Um, so, yes, I've just got to decide where to kind of mount it and do it, but I'm not going to do it yet, I don't think, because I'm going away and I don't want to run that. It's still a bit new. Um, I'll probably wait till I get back to set that up. So yeah, so that's what that is sitting there, winding away. It's just, um, yeah, it's just for me really to make sure that it's all good and it's going to run. I mean, I think I think it will. I mean, it's, it's a bit noisy, which is slightly not that it matters there. Everything's noisy, um, but yeah, it's just got a weird sort of chuggy little noise to it. Which actually, if I turn it up faster, it actually goes makes more noise running slower than it does running faster. Um, I think that is it. Yeah, not a bad week really. So, um, yeah, the fish all look happy. All the corals look happy. Um, my Duncan, which I've had in the tank um, probably two or three years actually, one of the first things to go in, but he was over the back and he kept getting picked up by my Regal Tangs, um, who randomly just like to pick up stuff and swim around with it and then just drop it off randomly um so i stuck it to a rock uh, and it's salt for about nine months um and it could be i thought it was flow to be honest but now i've seen it come out more it doesn't look like it's really getting hit by lots of flow so i think it may be now i'm using the pellets and obviously i'm getting more bacteria because that's carbon dosing so it's feeding the bacteria it's quite possible i've just got more bacteria in the water column and it's liking it that's one of the reasons i mean i'm definitely definitely noticing i'm pulling out more in the skimmer since i've started the um pellets um yeah so whatever it is it's it's getting happy than it has been for a long time yeah, everything else looks fine. All the gone seem happy. This guy here, actually, I said was, uh, I got that from the tank breakdown. Um, I said it was quite boring. It's actually getting some colour in it. So I've noticed that the, um, it's a short pollock, gone. Um, but the actual centre of each head has got like a nice kind of, lur lur what the colour is that? lilac -y sort of purple colour in it. So it's actually quite nice. I mean, it's delicate colours, but... Yeah, it's nice actually. It seems quite happy there. So, yeah, so it's all good. So, I can't think of anything else I need to talk about this week. So, yeah, it's been a pretty good week, really. Uh, I think that that is it, really. Yeah. There's just one thing I would say is I've had some comments about you don't want to see me, you want to see the fish. 
but that's that's not these videos are just how to run the tank what just the boring day to week to week stuff that i have to buy have to do the problems i get um so it's not i do other videos that show the content of the tank so these are not about what's in the tank it's about how to maintain the tank and keep stuff in the tank alive so these, these are what these videos are about really um and i post probably four or five um posts a week on instagram about the tank i don't really make many youtube videos about the tank content um i'll probably do a couple a month actually so yeah so i think that is it for this week um next week i have planned i want to look at my uvs um the bulbs are good because i replace the bulbs every every december ten thousand hours a year so i do them every december um but i did notice last time i changed the bulb that one of the quartz sleeves it was a bit um i describe it really it's like powdery i got I mean, i gave it a quick wipe but it didn't come off and so in my head i went i need to look at that that was four months ago um so i think this week i will just take those out and I don't even clean them. I, I don't know. I did think whether I could citric acid it or something, and then I thought, I don't know if I'm going to damage it. Um, but I will have to take a look. If I can't clean it, I'll buy a new one, obviously. Um, so I think that's really all I've got planned for next week. Obviously, just do my normal water changes. So I'm just about to do 300 litres. I bought, actually, I bought more salt as well this week because I because of that clam. I did an extra 300, 400 litres um, water change uh, two weeks ago, I think. So I burnt for a bit more salt. So I've just got another 40 kilos of Tropic Marin um, and made up another 1,000 litres, basically, because I burnt through the last 1,000 a bit quicker than I normally do. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's where we are. So hopefully... Um, yeah, you know, the tank is in sort of tick along mode and it will all be good. It does look, I know no one likes to say it, I touch wood, but um, yeah, everything looks pretty happy. Still got the convict tang being an absolute dick, but that's obviously just his personality. <laughs> so whether he ever stop chasing those yellow tangs around, I don't know, but um, that's where we are with them. So other than that, my copper band also has, I've been feeding him um, bloodworm because he loves it, actually loves it. But I've just noticed that now he has also like taken the mice out of the water column as well. So he's, he's in there with all the other fish, like proper going for it. So that's a good sign, really. So I think, I mean, I wasn't worried about it anyway. He's, you know, he's fat, he's happy, he's healthy. Um, he's got a big tank to pick on, you know, pick off stuff. There's no Atasia left in his tank at all now that I, that I can see. Um, yeah, so he looks nice and fat and happy. He's got still got a fair bit of growing to do, but yeah, he's a nice fish actually. So he's a lot easier than my last one. My last one I had was um, very picky, really. He would um, mainly only eat mastic, which I had to stick to the glass, which just not very practical so yeah i think that is it for this week so yeah that's it i will see you in the next one